Hello everyone! Here's the exclusive 1UP Infinite interview with art designer Mel Kishida. Best known for his work in the Blue Reflection series, but also a number of anime as its original character designer. As one of his rare appearances outside of Japan, it was a pleasure and opportunity to meet an artist for a game that I've been a fan of for years. I was always fond of his distinct drawing style, a style that he is aware of and expresses the thought processes that goes into his characters. Anyways, without further ado, here's the interview. Thank you once again for your time, Kishida san. So, I, as a child, I used to love anime, you know, games, etc. So I used to draw as a hobby. Uh, but then, you know, around my in my in my twenties, I started using the internet and I created my own homepage, you know, website, and I uploaded my uh, works. And uh, one publisher found my work and they started me to uh, draw for them, and that's how I started to get a job. Um, good afternoon, I'm Kishida-san. My name is Nay. I'm from 1UP Infinite. And, well, he answered, he asked the first question that I wanted to ask, so this actually goes into my question. Um, so, I'm a huge fan of your work based on the Blue Reflection series that you've done and the art style. I was always a fan of it because it felt like, you know, even like the game itself, it felt soft and warm and like homecoming in a sense. Like, you know, you're playing through a high school student during their like coming of youth and whatnot. So what my question is, these similar qualities are also shown when you did your work in the Atelier series. So when you create your characters, like how do you bring them to life? Like how do you encapture the personalities of the characters that you draw? Thank you for the question. In terms of the character, the, the you know inner you know personality of the character, the appeal of uh, a character comes from you know usually if a, a certain character looks a certain way, then your mind goes, oh, this must be this type of character. If there's an affinity to the look and the personality of the character, and I try to have a little bit of you know unexpectedness. Just because a character looks a certain way doesn't necessarily mean a character is actually that way. So that adds a little bit of depth to that character. So in terms of the uh, inner personality of the character, that's kind of what I go for. And in terms of the visual of the character that I create, same thing with the uh, blue reflection. Um, I don't, I don't try to um, get too drawn to the content of the game or you know, whatever that I'm creating for. I try to draw different genres such as music and fashion and you know, what I'm interested in. I try to draw the inspiration from those and then sort of reflect that in, in each character. So first of all, thank you so much that yeah, you know, you mentioning this title means a lot to me, and I'm sure the author would be happy to hear because that's a title that you never, <laughs> you never expect to hear in New York. So yeah, thank you so much for that. Uh, as for your question, yes, I definitely switch gears when I'm writing to different demographics. Uh, you know, writing for uh, shou shounen, you know, the uh, target audience is uh, boys and men. So when I'm drawing you know, girls, I make sure that they're cute from a man's you know, point of view. And I'm drawing for uh, shoujo manga and stuff. You know, I, I assume the personality of a girl and seeing, try to see things from girl's point of view. So I'm drawing men for shoujo. Then, oh, I, I need to draw somebody who's like so cool from girl's point of view. And if I'm drawing cute girl for a shoujo, then I make sure that I'm seeing the, 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 the girl I'm drawing from girl's point of view, so female point of view, so that it's not, um, you know, she, that she's likable, even seen from um, uh, female audiences. So yes, I definitely switch here. Mm -hmm.
So I do a lot of character design, so I'll talk, I'll talk yeah. about that. Um, so, you know, obviously there's a client and they'll ask me to, uh, they'll talk about this is the series or the title that I, we want you to come up with a character design for. This is the setup in the world of the series and these are the you know, personalities of these characters. And I try, you know, some client give me a lot of information on that, some people very little, but I try to digest them in, the, in my own way, and based on what I understand about these characters, I try to come up with a visual, and what I focus on is making sure that these characters are as uh, appealing to as many, you know, demography as possible, because this is a business, and I'm going to do this for business, so I want as many people as possible to like my characters, so, you know, I, I try to find a way to that so that the characters appeal to more fans. Mm -hmm. What are some of your favorite anime and video game characters that you don't draw like other characters that aren't yours that you're a fan of and if there's a collaborator that you want to work with whether it's in a video game or anime what is your dream collaboration or dream project that you would wish to work on in the future if you had the chance So growing up, well, when I was young, uh, I loved uh, Romancing Saga, you know, the game, and uh, Tomomi Koe, she was the character designer, and uh, the role of work is uh, amazing, and I really respect that work. Um, in terms of other characters, uh, Hoshinori from uh, Kikosuke and uh, the newest, you know, Gundam series, uh, the which is uh, yeah. 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 So in terms of the collaborator I uh, like to work with, um, I actually like um, working with people from different genres. I'm not too interested in working from the same genre as other illustrators, etc. So I'd be interested in working with VTubers. And uh, a lot of people suggest that, you know, uh, because I'm on public facing, you know, things on YouTube, etc. Why don't you, you make your own <laughs> VTuber? But I just like to, you know, work with me as myself. Uh, just one more thing and the next question can be asked from someone else but it's funny you mentioned um which from mercury because like when i was watching the first few episodes i actually did think of blue reflection in that instance where there's a bunch of high school students pretty much living everyday lives and then next thing you know they're piloting gundams and you know mobile suits just like in blue reflection they live everyday lives as high school students and then next thing you know they're magical girls so, you know, because I, I interact with fans directly more, I don't think that that necessarily makes the broader audience or broader fans a different kind of fans. But I do say, I will say that um, because, um, you know, I, I, my work and myself is featured in sort of a two-dimensional way, people think that I am also fictional and two-dimensional and people can say whatever they want to say because it's over the internet, but I am a person with, you know, human emotions and my, myself being presented with live being and inter interacting with fans in, in person helps them realize, oh, I'm an actual person, you know, he's an actual person. So by, by uh, uh, providing fan service, direct fan service, and interacting with them directly actually improves sort of the quality of the fans. Like they understand that I'm a human being too. Um, so, you know, when I'm angry at my fans, then I get angry and they, they see that I'm a, a human being a, with an actual emotion. So that, that's, that's, that's why I do this because I, they, I want them to know that I. So it's a you know hot subject in Japan as well. And uh, however, you know, if you think back on time, this 
everybody draws vegetable now, but it needs to be hand drawing, and there's photography, you know, photography is right there, but everything had to be drawn before the photography was invented, etc. So throughout time, there has been innovations that, you know, changed what we do, um, but what's important is how do we use that invention and technology, right? So um, as some people are worried that it's sort of AI-generated art sort of lessens the um, actual you know human artist value and their work uh, but i don't really see it that way it just gives more variety because now people who can draw are able to use these technologies to you know express them in a different way and um even if a, an ai generated picture and a hand-drawn picture by an actual artist um, somehow AI generated art is sort of inorganic, you can tell that, you know, there's no thought behind it, an uh, actual painting by a, a, you know, per, a person, a live person, there's a meaning to it, and there's a, because somebody with a history in the background drew it, and there's a value in that, in itself, um, so I, I don't really see that, uh, it's, it's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yes, obviously, but uh, in terms of the you know professional illustrators my, like myself, there's a lot of content that needs to be covered, and um, there are certain things that you know it should be left to the AI so that human you know artists can have time to work on better quality things because um, I, I feel that it lessens the load of our human artists. Um, it makes our jobs easier and I hope that they come up with, you know, I draw rough sketches and an AI can make the line drawing better so that I don't have to. Yeah. The mobile game for Blue Reflection you're working on is a Blue Reflection Sun and um, from what I was able to look into, it basically follows the ending of the first game. But what I found interesting about the trailer is that it seems to center around a male protagonist more so than the usual female protagonist. So how was it like drawing a male character when you're used to drawing more female characters? How was that as an experience? Yeah. Thank you for the question. Um, uh, actually, the this project for a social, uh, you know, a game, um, a mobile game, started the same time as the anime and the second game. So it was ongoing. Uh, it was happening at the same time, and. Uh, the target, targeted demography for each was different. So they knew, we knew going in that social video, uh, game, this game was targeted to a different type of audience. Um, and um, so yes, a lot of, you know, Blue Reflection fans like the games and the anime that uh, only girls appear and we understand that and we're getting a lot of feedback not all of them positive <laughs> and we get that but um with that said you know when i get, uh, design characters girls and boys alike uh, i really c focus on can you like this character how can you fall in love with the character and try to maximize that quality um so you know it, when you uh, have a, a main character for rpg it's an avatar so that player can so, sort of see themselves in that so uh, most of the time it doesn't have a lot of characters it's sort of bland and you know clean slate if you will but i make sure that you know in terms of the visual and the character inner character of him um, i try to make sure that he's likable and you know the, the player should see themselves in him but at the same time they should like this character so that's what i i thought about in designing the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.